Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Shaman King 2021, uh, episode 16. So, first of all, you may be wondering about this. It's getting to that season where it's starting to get cold. Um, and, like, I don't fully know what the temperature is like outside right now, but it is cold in here, so... I have my blanket, <laughs> just to keep me warm and everything during reactions, um, and just otherwise. So yeah, I'm wearing this for today. I'm just I just have this on. Um, during the reactions, I'll probably tuck my other arm underneath as well. <laughs> so yeah, pretty interesting, um, pretty unique. You don't see a lot of Let's Players do this, but also. I don't have full control over the thermostats and stuff, so kind of just going with this. <laughs> um, that being said, um, so let's talk about what we're getting into, or getting back to, I should say. So we put Shaman King back on hold in July, and it was just a matter of time before we got back to it. We took a break from it just to kind of refresh ourselves so we didn't get a little burnt out. And I'm excited to see more. Since we had uh, put it on hold, it has come to Netflix officially. And the dub has released. And I've checked out some of the dub and it's not bad. Um, but we're going to be still continuing in the original sub. Just because at this point it's what... I've gotten used to <laughs> um, and I'm definitely interested to see where they take a lot of this because as I've stated in the past I don't really know I've seen the original Shaman King multiple times but I don't remember too much past a certain point and I never read that far into the manga back when I did read manga so <laughs> We're just going to kind of have to take this as it goes and see what happens. The last episode we left off on, though, was a Horo Horo episode. He had gotten lost while... Well, not really lost. He was snowboarding, I believe, and he kind of got knocked out and fell unconscious for multiple days and then had to end up helping this... Uh, park ranger or something like that with this bear trouble and everything and it, it, it was a really good episode that really developed him well and uh it, it, it seemed like very much like a you're kind of running the mill <sighs> excuse me you're kind of running the mill um not filler it's not really filler but you're kind of run-of-the-mill episode that's just, you know, just this episodic thing. I, I don't know how to word it. Um, it. It didn't seem like too important to the overall story or anything, but it was pretty good. And again, it did develop Horo Horo pretty well. So I'm excited to see where we're going to go, how we're going to deal with how, and so on and so forth. Um... This this reboot has been pretty good so far, and I'm really excited to just see more about what this vision for this series is. Um, and I'm hoping to enjoy it. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. Um, either way. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we're just going to get this started. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the re uh, to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. 
because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, let's talk Dracula. Let's talk Vlad Tepes, Vlad the Impaler. So, the real-life historical figure, Vlad the Impaler, um, was a victim who became a tyrant. When he was young, he was enslaved to the Ottoman Empire, and he was tortured, he was raped, he was just horrifically treated for a long, long time. Um, and I believe it was his own father who sold him into it, too. He, was, he, he came out of that, and basically, once he started leading armies and stuff, he, he wanted revenge, in a way. <laughs> and so it, it caused him to become very gruesome and violent and aggressive towards his enemies. Hence, doing things like impaling people on poles, among many other things. Um, he, he became known for his very gruesome, very horrible actions. And I'm, I'm not going to say, of course, that his actions are justified, because of course they're not. But you understand why he went that hard when you know about his backstory, when you know the horrible stuff that he was put through as a kid going into his adult life and everything. And it, it's... It, when you really research on Vlad the Impaler, it's wild. And I just wanted to talk about that since he was brought up in this. They, they definitely did not go into all of the nuances and all of the uh, factors about Vlad's life and what made him into the big name historical figure that in inspired Dracula, inspired Bram Stoker to create the Dracula story. Um, but this is such a timely episode to return to, <laughs> um, with it being October, with it being the month of Halloween and everything, to have us return to Shaman King with an episode featuring a vampire or quote unquote because he's technically just a shaman it, it's it's so fitting and so funny in a way but also it was just really good <laughs> i really enjoyed this episode because i've always been into the entire vampire mythos like that entire kind of uh, mythology centering around vampires has just always intrigued me um, I, I've seen a lot of different vampire stories of all different kinds, of all different qualities. I've seen Twilight. I, I, I've read Twilight, too. I, I've seen um, Vampires in the Underworld series. I, I've seen multiple iterations of the Dracula story, and so on and so forth. And so it's like I, I've seen a lot of different takes on vampires. And I like that this one kind of is... Like, again, even though he's not technically a vampire, they still play around with that. And they play around with the idea that, like, oh, of the type of vampire who's not actually affected by any of these uh, stereotypical weaknesses, such as sunlight or a cross or whatnot. Um, I, I like that idea, and it's it's been done before. Like, there are variations on that, such as with Blade. Blade is a daywalker. He can traverse in the sunlight um but he's also pretty unique with the other vampires in even his universe <laughs> so to be fair um but i really liked this uh, we're getting to see some of how's minions and how formidable they can be we can see that with his oversoul boris here is able to not only basically be a vampire but he's able to do certain t 
typical traits such as take over a person's mind. Um, he, he takes over Lysurg after drinking his blood using his, uh, his uh, shaman spirit, his guardian spirit, Blomro. And it's, it's wild to think about. <laughs> um, it, it's so interesting looking too, like the way they also just showcase it, the way they like, the way they present all of this is really great. Like, when you see him just go up to Lyserg and, like, just bite his neck and drink his blood, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's just such an iconic shot. I had to use it for the thumbnail um, because it's just such an iconic shot. Like, that is the, the iconic vampire, like, view. Drinking blood from a person's neck. Um, and... I like how everyone ends up having to work together to take him down. It, it shows the strength of Hao's followers that that everyone ended up having to work together. And yes, definitely the spotlight was on Ryu. He he was the star of this episode for sure. Um, but he did not do this alone by any means. And he would agree to that. He would very much acknowledge that he needed his friends to help him here. Like 100%. But he is the one who gave the final blow there at the end. He is the one who, like, was focused on and the episode named after. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I very much enjoyed this. I love the imagery. I love the history of Vlad the Impaler being talked about. I loved just... The iconography, just how iconic everything was with the vampire legends and mythos. So it's just, I, I really love this. I really got into this. And seeing Ryu be badass and show off some of his new abilities is also very cool. Um, this was just a great episode to return to this series to. I, I have definitely missed Shaman King since I put it on hold back in July. And... I wanted to get back to it and just needed to find another slot and space to put it in. Now I found one. <laughs> um, and so I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad that this episode was what we returned to in October. I just think that's fantastic. That is so beautiful. So fitting. Um, and, and it's just another good episode. After having a really good one that we left off on, we came back with another really good one. And again, part of that is admittedly because of my fascination in vampire lore. It's just something I'm into. So it's like, yeah, of course I'm going to be interested in an episode like this, especially one that actually does touch on the origins of the vampire legend and how it started because of, like, Vlad Tepish. So I just think that's really cool. Um, and just as a note for the, some of you who might want to mention this in the comments or whatnot, I know that uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula is not technically the first vampire story, but it is the one that uh, ma made vampires popular. There were, like I think, a couple other vampire stories prior to Dracula. Uh, but none of them really stuck as much. Um, it, it was Bram Stoker's genius that really, truly created the mythical creature that we think of today. So, yeah, just want to bring that up real quick. I know there were vampire, a couple vampire stories prior to Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, but either way, uh, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this episode of Shaman King 2021? And are you excited to be back to this series just like I am? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.